one. Hey, yo, it's me. It's me. It's the R.A.V. coming back again, doing the Hillcast this week. We got a bigger ensemble than we normally do because, you know, we got to do it big when the greatest man that ever lived comes back. So with me, uh, my gay partner in crime, as always, the man with a thousand, the man who has more name changes than Chris Jericho knows holds, the Impact Dude himself. What's up, man? Thank you. What an introduction for me, the greatest man that ever lived. It's awesome, man. Thank you, brother. It's been great. It's a long time since we've done the show together, man. I know. It has been a little bit like, what, two, three weeks now? But <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> prior to that, it actually was a while. But uh, You know, also with me, to return from last week, since somehow for the first time in the show's fucking history, when it wasn't a one-man show, we actually did this shit in a half hour. Wrestling Robert is back. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Happy to be once again back in the Hillcast to talk about all things Austin Aries, our new champion. And fourth on the list today, uh, man is super bad himself, Mick, 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 Mick Larkin. Larkin, what up, man? What's up, guys? Happy to be a part of the Hillcast as always. How's everybody doing? Good. Oh, we're doing fantastic. Oh, boy. Somebody uh, step on your dick again, Raven Effect? For God's like sake. my dick could ever be stepped on. <laughs> I think this tiny thing could be stepped on and be like a chihuahua or a cat or an ant or a mouse or some shit like that. Real talk, though, speaking of cats, true story, my fucking cat, thankfully she killed it this time around, but my cat two days ago during the Super Bowl, right when the game ends, so I'm already not in a good mood because, you know, I, I love some Tom Brady. Um, I looked down on the floor and... The bitch brought in a fucking bat. Brought a fucking bat in the house. Kill the bat. Thankfully, the, de- the bat was dead, but, you know, it was a big fucking bat. Like, Batman wasn't fucking around with my cat. So, I don't know. I don't even know why I said that, but, you know, it was just on my mind and just really, you know, you guys are So, what today. happened? How'd you get out of the house? It was dead, thankfully. It was, oh, it was dead. <laughs> yeah, like, we all have rabies now and it's a whole new <laughs> form of super AIDS. But, it was already dead, at least. I mean... The cat had a nice, you know, meal and you get a bat. She didn't even kill the thing. Like, she didn't eat it. She killed it, but she didn't eat it. <laughs> Just like, hey, here's a fucking dead bat. So, yeah, thankfully the motherfucker wasn't alive. Like, and I just, like, I put through, like, a plastic container. I was, like, holding it down. Like, hopefully this motherfucker doesn't move. And then it was, like, I could see the blood. And I was, like, oh, this bat is deader than shit. But I don't know if it was supposed to be Dracula or, like, Bruce Wayne's cousin. But... It's dead, so I'm sorry. Confessing that murder. So, uh, anyways, let's talk some pro wrestling. Uh, so, actually, first of all, hit the plugs. Uh, of course, always check out ImpactAsylum.net. Uh, ImpactAsylum.net. You can always check out our boy, fo- fellow Hearcast member, Hillcast member, FK9 with Straight Shooting. Uh, check out the Wrestling Perspective with our boys Dennis and Petey. Uh, I'm not going to give love to that other site, Wrestling Inc., that they're a part of, but I will never give them love at Dennis and Petey at the Wrestling Perspective. you got to check that out. Great stuff. Of course, my main man, BQ, at the Impact Lounge. Um, I know I'm going to be missing someone here, but we kind of cut half of these plugs out. Of course, Andre Corbeil, Andre Corbeil Show. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Robert does wrestling. Robert, you want to go ahead and kick it over there? Yeah, I got a couple of things, you know rolling around i got a review soon that i'm gonna be doing with our fellow hill cast larkin so be on the, the lookout for that that's gonna be a retro review but outside of that you know the same regular stuff impact review every single friday night something around that time so that is what i have in store for 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 the fans all right and speak yeah. Yeah, I was man. Saying, speaking of Larkin, Larkin, what's up with your show? Dude, SM Show Podcast, we're doing our thing. I got an interview actually coming up real, real soon with uh, current Impact Wrestling knockout Casey Spinelli. So that's what we got going on real, real soon on the SM Show Podcast Network. You, you, you're Larkin. What, yes. What, what, what's, what's SM stand for, man? <laughs> Um, okay, so it's a playoff of my partner, Steve Nicoforo. Uh, it's Steve and Mike. That's what SM stands for. Uh, when I, I, I got excited there for a minute. I, I was thinking about you know you and Casey Spinelli and yeah. I, I was I was I was I was I was definitely looking forward to the video. Two scoops, man. Two scoops. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing with that, like you say S and M, and I know like 
like Larkin, Pornhub Larkin, I'm thinking BDSM. So, I mean, you just throw I mean, BDSNM, TNA, I mean, we just, you know, it's just porn all around. I got you, man. Well, yeah, dude, with my interviews, you know, I, I pretty much have talked to everybody from wrestlers and, yes, adult stars, as you mentioned. That's why you guys call me the Pornhub Larkin. So, yeah, man, uh, you know, I, I talk to everybody. I mean, you and Hurls, dude, like, Hurls getting run for his money now. I didn't really watch this shit. Like, Larkin might have this motherfucker beat for beating it. I, I might, yes. <laughs> so, so how do I get to be a part of a porn star interview? Here's the thing, man. I, I mean, just... How do I do this? Okay, so. So with the people that I've had on, I've had a uh, Stacy Star on. I've had legendary uh, adult star Rebecca Bardo. She's been in the game for twenty years. Alora Jensen. Um, oh God, who's the other one? Oh, Tyra Scott. I mean, yeah. The thing is, all you gotta do is either just message them, just be polite, be professional, and then there you go. Just explain what your product's all about, and then you get it flowing. I mean, I was just thinking, I was just doing one of your interviews with them. Uh, sure. I mean, I, hey. I got, I got all kind of questions. Sure. <laughs> it's like. There's like so much to so much to ask. Absolutely, <laughs> so much more fun on the Hillcast with Raven Effect. Who's <laughs> clearly more well versed at this stuff than I am. Yes. <laughs> um. So he wants to get out on one of those porn interviews. Uh, Larkin, Pornhub Larkin. How do I just do a porn? How do, how do you get me in that? Oh man! Oh, I'm gonna man. break my screen. <laughs> Just, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I think you first have to grow a large penis. Very good effect. We just discussed this, all right? There, there, is a, there is like a market for dudes with extremely tiny dicks, right? Like people want to see that. Of course. And then, you know, you got your Shane Diesel, your Black Zillow. So there you go. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want people like knowing too much. But um, shit, I can't remember the name of it. But uh, it's like that dude named Porno Dan that bangs all these like hot chicks. And he's got, like, tiniest dick ever, but he always got, like, Brittany Amber and all the fucking hot girls from the cat house and shit. And I'm just like, I could do that. Yeah, that dude, Dennis, with cat house the series. Yeah, my, that dude had everyone. Oh, you know. the Hoff? Yeah. Dude, that, dude, Dennis Hoff, that dude's straight pimping. He is. Legit pimping. Like, Lamar Odom can OD on drugs and almost die from banging this dude's horse. True <laughs> <laughs> <Your> story. True <laughs> fucking story. Back in the day on HBO, there was this dude Dave's old porn. Dave, Dave, old Dave's old porn. He used to like talk about his porn collection. He actually would interview the people who were in like the pornos from like the eighties and stuff like that. With David Tell, right? Yes. Yeah, I remember him from Comedy Central. I didn't watch the show, but like I remember him from Comedy Central, and I saw the ads back in those days. So, yep, Dave's old porn. Y'all are dropping some serious knowledge here, man. <laughs> this is this is insane. I, I gotta get. I gotta become a part of this. <clears throat> I gotta get me some in on that. Okay. When you're when you're in a horrible fucking toxic relationship for six years and you don't really get pussy that often, I mean, sometimes you learn a lot about porn that you never thought you was gonna end up doing. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, now that I'm single, I don't have to like watch it as much because of the shitty thing, like the fucked up thing about it. But now I'm growing my forearms from lifting weights. I don't think that went over as funny as it did, but someone laugh at home. <laughs> Uh, let's let's get to the news um, and the Adult Video Network news for the week. Uh, actually, no. Rosemary, uh, for, rumor is Rosemary got injured wrestling against Jessica Havoc uh, a couple days ago or something along those lines. Um, so let's not go ahead and just talk about Havoc being a, you know, like a shitty worker and all like uh, we did with Sexy Star. So from the sounds of it, from what we heard, sounded like a freak injury. Uh, she planted her foot and went for a kick. And uh, rolled out in pain. I've, a lot of people, if you follow sports and whatnot, that uh, normally when you plant your foot, do something like that, and then you do the twist and it goes down, that normally sounds like a torn ACL. Uh, I'm hoping that's not the case. That's just kind of what it sounds like to me. Hopefully, uh, we don't lose Rosemary for a long time because it sounded like she's kind of getting the push that she deserves on its way. But big, big, big loss for impact if that's the case. Uh, maybe she could still do a valet type of thing, bring back Crazy Steve, hint, hint. But... Um, yeah, uh, impact, dude. Well, oh, you, my man. Yeah, I mean, that's how you tell your ACL, right? So uh, she hasn't commented. There's been no uh, public acknowledgement of it. But let me just throw this out to the group, guys. You know, isn't this now the time you've got your 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 your, your biggest female star possible, like your biggest star? I mean, she truly is a star. And she's going to be on the shelf. And But you want to put her on TV. Does, wouldn't it be the right time to go and have Rosemary up in the rafters, okay? 
you bring back Crazy Steve, you bring in Jimmy Havoc, right? You 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 you, you bring back Abyss, you create a stable, right? Then you have her giving promos from up in the rafter, right? So she's 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 over overseeing and overshadowing this, and she's she's gonna wreak havoc on the you know on the women who of course she's got a feud with somebody, and then you get the fake Rosemary, just like we had Crow Sting and all the fake stings, and you have that come at you. What a way to have a long story arc, right? That you would continue to keep this incredible talent on air without having to have her step foot in the ring. I mean, it worked for Sting for what eighteen months. You'd only have to do it for her for you know nine or ten months, right? In worst case scenario, because she'd probably get in the ring and keep it easy for then. I mean, you're not healed for a year, but you can do pretty much everything in ten months if you're smart about it, right? What do you guys What do you guys think about that? To to basically keep her on TV, keep her a major part part of the show, um, but hide her. Keep her with Allie. Put her around Allie. Yeah. The, the, I mean, I would love to see her on Allie, but that's just maybe maybe Larkin. Maybe that's her interview. There you go. <laughs> the I, just love, I just love how she just instantly became the one man called Sting, and uh, totally was not ripped off from anything that's ever happened in total original storyline there. But why not? But why not? It hasn't been done with a woman. It would be different because she'd have a stable. Yeah. But why not? It worked. Yeah. I mean, everything's a ripoff, dude. Yeah, but, but well, the, you mean to tell me this big group that comes around yelling too sweet and stuff like that and taking over a company or whatnot is a ripoff of something else? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but but the thing is that there's always uh, two standards when it comes down to wrestling: one for everybody else and one for for Impact Wrestling. So if Impact did that, almost you know, I I can already picture all the shit, all the dirt sheets were will be running like, oh my god, Impact Wrestling doesn't have like an original idea blah 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 no i i think i r- r- rather avoid all of this because you know all the propagandists and all the people like that will be you know having a field day with a storyline like that you know re- do you guys remember the, the the whole eric young and daniel bryan and how much you know they push that that type of narrative and that type of propaganda i i'd rather avoid that to be honest i I don't think it is a bad idea, but I won't. I wouldn't do it. I'd rather do it something backstage, that something more. You know, how can I put it? Esoteric, more, more of a uh, yeah, original thing when it comes down, but not the whole sting in the rafter type of thing. What do you guys you know, think? Yeah, go ahead. They, they they said they said the same thing about the broken stuff. And then they went nuts with all of the delete chants. And when you got the when you got the ROH, you know, get WWE. So they were watching, right? So I mean, yeah, there's there's always negative crap that's written about impact. So I think at some point, Robert, I think you just have to go, you know what? Fuck it. I just don't care anymore. People are gonna write what they're gonna write. Let's put on a good product. And the broken stuff went over, right? The EY stuff went over. You know, people complain, oh, it's 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 a ripoff. And they kind of got there first. But, but at the end of the day, who really cares? You know what I'm saying? So as long as they put on a good product, I mean, let's face it. You know, Raven Effect was talking about it uh, just before, the, the, the too sweet narrative. You know, the, there is definitely the NWO light called the Bullet Club running around right now. And people still do too sweet. And it's still over. So if it works with the fans, I say do it. If it's not going to work with the fans, I think that's a different story. I would definitely agree with you guys on that. And also with the Rosemary thing, I still would want to see her on TV, but this also gives people like Allie, Ty of Valkyrie. We got Sue Young now. We get to see some more uh, knockouts in the spotlight as well. Yeah, um, Sue Young's in a debut, by the way. Good job, Larkin. He's ruined it for a bunch of people who have no fucking idea who Sue, Lar- who Sue Young is, like me. Sorry. It's all right, um, you know. We'll, we'll have another chick. We need more impact knockouts, you know what I'm saying? I mean, people probably know, but I don't really know who she is. I heard they're kind of similar. And look, I remember when Rosemary made her debut, like uh, on uh, TNA Asylum at the time, we, we a lot of us thought like it was Daphne, and then I heard people say it was Sue Young. Remember that uh, impact dude? I remember that conversation quite well. Yeah, I think almost, I think it ended with you want to fuck me. I think it's how that conversation. It ended. did. Yeah, it did actually. Yeah. And I almost actually said your your actual name on the air of Matt Hardy. Yeah. So I just I'm sorry I almost let that slip out. Yeah, but, it's all right. Yeah. I don't have a good uh, name anyway. It's ruined. <laughs> yeah, it's been tarnished a lot. Hey Larkin, uh, when I go on your show, can I be Pornhub dude? 
Sure. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> Can I be <laughs> excellent? Can I be the Y O U J I Z Z? Sure. <laughs> You can be the X video queen. I mean, King. I yeah. was going to drop X videos next. Then there's, I can be the X and XX. I um, need to just stop, dude. Like, if anyone actually knows who's fucking like, him, like. Well, dude, I was waiting for X hamster to come up. I'm like, what are you doing over there? X and XX, X videos, Pornhub, the you jizz. There you go. I, I could be X hamster, dude. Port Hub, dude, X hamster, dude, whichever one is least likely to sue, I'm good. How did you porn not come up? I mean, what about Vivid? Lame dude? name. Lame name. Well, what about Vivid? It's like YouTube, but a boning. Yes. Yeah. Dude, in fact, dude, you can also be uh, friggin' Vivid, dude, if you want. The Bambros, dude. Good. <laughs> Better watch out, Robert. I keep looking at your name and going, thinking, Robert does Dallas is what I keep thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's the movie Raven Effect is going to star in. That's going to be named after you, buddy. Yeah. Well, the way Chef's loving WWE, we can do Chef does Bo Dallas here pretty soon. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry, Chef. I love you. Just don't fucking hate on Impact and like some NXT type of shit. Um, I could be the BRAZ. I mean, for Brass, there you go. I like that. All right. That's why I go by the RIV anymore because I don't want to get sued either because Lord knows I'm broke as shit. But I love you, Scott Levy. Uh, <laughs> house shows. Uh, it's going to be some house shows put up on Twitch now. Uh, here's where the, Ra the RAV doesn't really know what he's talking about too much. So, Larkin, you got the scoop down on this one. So, uh, what, what's up with some house shows on Twitch? Okay. So, one of the things that we got, we got Brace for Impact coming really, really soon. I believe that's going to be on February... 16th or 17th coming to Twitch. Uh, Impact is actually doing some uh, house shows March 23rd and March 24th. March 23rd, they are going to be at the Newark Pavilion in Newark, California. And March 24th, you get to see them at the Salinas Pal Armory in Salinas, California. And on the poster for Big Time Wrestling Presents Impact, we have Alberto El Patron, Taya Valkyrie, Rosemary, Trevor Lee, Matt Seidel, Brian Cage, LAX, Eddie Edwards, Eli Drake, and Moose. Not bad. Uh, That's awesome. Wrestling Robert should talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I can do a review on on about the the Twitch transmission because you know I saw the pictures and the pictures of the place the place looks like jam packed. So let's see how the whole things ro roll out. I'll be down for that for a review. Go ahead. So here, here's my question, Larkin, right? Yeah, but... So anything that's on Twitch is live, right? Pretty much, yes. So how do I DVR it or watch it later? Because cause oh. I'm... I, look, I'm married. I got two kids. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I'm not allowed to watch, you know, like Twitch on a Friday night. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I how do I get to watch it when, like, everybody's asleep? I think you can just... Out? Well, I'm sure it'll probably be uploaded, and then you can just search it on Twitch, and it'll be right there at your viewing pleasure. Because nothing's uploaded now. They already had one event... Mm -hmm. And and it or so 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 far in their past events, I got it up right now. They 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 had Impact that streamed from on uh, Monday the 29th from six to eight, and they had Barbed Wire Massacre. And I'm looking at it, and there's you know there's there's you can click on it right, but there's no like play me now button. I'm like God God damn it, I want to watch it. And the event type is live stream, and there's nothing under videos except for Barbed Wire Massacre three. I think in that case, you could do what I do. I just go on WatchWrestling.Uno and it has all, like, wrestling events, like, from Impact and all over the world. So probably <laughs> on that. <laughs> so basically, steal the shit. Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it's for research purposes. It's for research purposes. <laughs> well, oh, then speaking of what else we got, guys, we got One Night Only Canadian Clash coming to the GWN Network on Friday, February 16th with Alberto El Patron versus James Storm. And what has been known to be, uh, you know, James Storm's final impact appearance. So, 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 so that that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. Now, do you think they're going to put the stuff on the GWN? Because you bring up the GWN, mm -hmm. so I can watch it there. Give me a reason to buy the damn thing. Exactly, I'm sure they will. But I know from what I watched the promo video for the one night only event that Josh Matthews was very intent on promoting that it's going to be on the GWN uh, app. Oh. I didn't know that. Uh, it's good that uh, Dan Lambert and a bunch of uh, 
shit gun over his head isn't going to be the last thing, his last impact appearance, technically. Although, let's be honest, there's going to be about 12 people that watch his actual final appearance on Impact. So, I mean, you know, but I'm just keeping that real. Hurls is going to be, like, counting for half of that viewership, too. He's going to log in six different times. But uh, there was a show. And it was a pretty damn good one. I heard people say that they didn't like it except for like two parts or whatnot. This was a fucking good show, man. I don't know why people are trying to be kind of down on it or whatnot, but it opened with uh, fat Yokozuna or like skinnier, younger Yokozuna challenging uh, the hippie with not much personality for the grand championship. So they dropped the stupid rules, thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, this was actually a pretty entertaining match, to be honest with you. I was, I was, I, I liked it a lot more than I thought, but we had. Uh, Evan Courageous Seidel born, uh, retaining the Impact Grand Championship uh, with, after a missed bonsai drop to the 450, if I remember correctly. But Matt Seidel retains, talking about some new higher power guidance, hippie yoga bullshit. But uh, Larkin, all you, my man. Dude, I-, I thought the match was very good. I think Falaba is extremely athletic, and I think Matt Seidel is great. Um, you know, I've watched these guys follow Bob on the independent scene doing his thing at WrestlePro with Mario Bocara. Uh, you look at Matt Seidel. Kyle dropped the reference on here not too long ago, even when he was in WSX, Wrestling Society X. I mean, the, the, both guys are great athletes, and I thought the match flowed very nicely, and I'm so happy that the uh, judges and all that is out the window. I kind of like the match. I, you know, it is cool to see now Matt Seidel having a little bit more personality because that is the direction they are going. The only thing that I didn't like at all was that this was match was, first of all, you know, we got the four-sided ring without any type of introduction or anything like that. So if you were a casual viewer, you will be like, what the hell? We got a change in the ring. And on top of that, you put like a title match call because there was no feud or anything. I was like... Man, you know, this is the first night of Cyrus being the the booker. And, you know, it's okay. But if Russo, Vince Russo did that, he will be crucified or anybody else. But since he's like the the, one of the darlings, you know, people were have like a a, a different opinion about the whole thing. And I was like uh, scratching my head. You know, this is not an attack on the talent, but the way they that first impression was presented <clears throat> it could have been a lot better and they had like a whole month to at least do a video package for the change from the six-sided ring all the way to the four-sided ring i think that was something that you know it should have happened go ahead uh, i mean yeah the six-sided ring or the four-sided ring thing right i mean it's 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 like it's like a religion Right? How many sides of the ring do you like the most? And nobody seems to know how to switch rings more often and better than, than Impact. Uh, last time they held a vote, and they and, and I'm pretty convinced they rigged the poll because they just had a vote as a way to get it over, right? And, and I don't think it really mattered. I think that they were going to make sure it passed. Um, and this time they just they just switched it. I, I didn't like it when they switched it the last time. I had no problem with them switching it the first time. And simply because they were, they were starting over, it was a new fresh... Everybody, everybody was coming in. They were like, hey, we're going to be like everybody else. And it's like, you know what? Fine. They switched it back. It was like, oh, Christ. Now they're just flip-flopping rings. Now they've had it, the six sides for a while, right, Robert? And and what are they, they, they go back to four. And it's like, oh, good God. And now you're just flipping rings again. So it's kind of like, I didn't like it when they switched from four to six. I didn't like it even less. I liked it even less. So they went from six back to four. And I like a four-sided ring. I'm just tired of them flip-flopping. I mean, they're worse than a damn politician. Um, this match is a great match. I, I think that Matt Seidel really showed how a little guy wrestles a big guy. And Larkin, I think you na- hit it nailed very squarely on the head when you said Falaba is very athletic. He does not get the credit for being athletic. A lot of the guys online, they look at Falaba and they go, he's fat, put a shirt on, right? The mm-hmm. truth is, it's like, it's like, who cares, man? He's an athletic guy. He's going out there. He's getting it done. He looks different. And that, that's the reason to kick his shirt off. Because he does look different. You know what I mean? But he is a very athletic guy. And I think he puts on a good match, especially with a smaller wrestler like Matt Seidel. Matt showed how to get over on a um, on a big man. And the match exceeded my expectations. Not because I don't think the, the guys are good in the ring. Because of that, that size differential between the two. 
It flowed very well. Seidel wins. Most important thing, there's no more rounds, right? If I ever, if I never see a judge in wrestling again, it'll be too damn soon. So but that alone gives me five stars on this one. Agree. Um. Yeah. Good match. <laughs> Hurls. Um. No, man. Like uh, five stars. I don't. Like, okay, but um, I'm not gonna go that far, but. Yeah, dude, like, Falaba, much like Yokozuna, dude, is athletic as fuck for a guy his size. Uh, I mean, like, people, um, yeah, okay, like, we can make jokes about people being fat, but stop fat shaming motherfuckers, man. Yokozuna was a world champ. Vader was fat. He was champ. I mean, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, just just cut it out, guys. Uh, not you guys, of course, but, like, a lot of these people just so overly just, oh, I need to complain about this, complain about that. Falaba's getting over in the impact zone, dude. Like, you could hear it. They're getting behind him. But, uh, yeah, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. So, uh, yeah, the big thing, four-sided ring is back. Um, also, prior to this, we had uh, we, show, we saw a guy stepping out of a limousine, heading towards the area. Longest walk to the ramp in, in the history of whatever. Right? It took the guy, like, almost two full hours just to walk from, like, wherever he parked into the building. Um, and then what else do we have going on? We had, uh, so Adonis and Eli Drake that showed them heading out to the ring for a celebration, bitches. Uh, and then we had uh, the Carolina Caveman giving a pep talk to Caleb Conley mm -hmm. about uh, how he saw bigger things for him and gold in his future. But then we got the match. It blew off. Uh, so KM, who was, you know, the boy and protege of Dan Lambert there for a brief minute, saw Lashley turn on him. So we got Lashley against KM. Uh, as the next match, uh, Lashley defeating KM, as he should. KM looked pretty decent in this match. Uh, obviously, they put the right guy over. But um, it was entertaining, I thought, and it needed to be done. So, uh, Robert, go to you. Uh, what were your thoughts on Lashley against KM? I was impressed by KM. I, I never thought uh, that I would see him like do a suicide dive from the ring to, to the outside. And this guy is he's huge. He's a heavyweight. He's one of the guys that impact should be investing upon because he's one of the select few heavyweights they still have left i uh, it is you know we we already know about lashley and the future about him but you know let let the whole storyline you know develop up until the end but you know i think it is i guess safe to say that this is basically the end and km should be the one at least at the end being the the winner because at the end of the day he is the one who is sustaining the longer i think this one uh it was okay uh, obviously lashley won uh, because there uh, you know this was a re re reboot therefore you need to have that feel good moment so obviously you need to have someone that a lot of people know that as Lashley going over, but I think the the wise decision in the long term is to have KM. He he could benefit the most about going over with, in a feud with with Bobby Lashley. Go ahead, Larkin. Um. Well, uh, as far as KM goes, you know, here's a dude, just like um, you know, we were talking about Fall about you know, Russell Pro. Pro Wrestling Syndicate, and yes, he actually was a developmental talent over there in the WWE for a little bit. The dude's come a long way in his career. Uh, this was a match where it accentuated his athleticism, and yes, the right guy went over in Bobby Lashley, but I thought the match was very decent, and I was uh, quite shocked to see where, you know, KM was going there. I mean, the dive over the ropes, the power moves. I mean, the dude is going to be something in impact. I mean, he's got the Biff Tannen gimmick right now with that whole Don't Call Me a Liar, a little Back to the Future-esque nostalgia there, but to be honest with you, I thought the match was uh, pretty decent. Yeah, good match. Um, honestly, you know, I I thought it was a good match, like you guys did. I was I was impressed with some of the things that KM did. I, I think he's got a bright future. I'm I'm not as sold on him right now, just because they've done nothing to put him over. Uh, they kind of actually dropped the you calling me a liar thing. I don't know why. I thought it was cool as shit when they started. So I'd like to see more of that. I think he needs a he needs a slow and steady build, but he needs a build. Him going over on Lashley, particularly in this spot, would have been wrong. He's just not there yet, and I, and I don't think there's any point in putting him over for the sake of Lashley's leaving, because then the fans will really feel like they just did it because Lashley's leaving. So, again, good, good, good match, solid outcome. Uh, see what the future brings. Yeah, uh, 
I don't see KM being like a world champ or everything, anything like that. But um, I don't know, like this whole, are you calling me a liar in those videos and skits like that? We're so fucking retarded. I don't know how you guys enjoyed it, but like everyone apparently was into it except me who like has taste or something. I don't get it. But honestly, the fact that we never get these videos of uh, KM coming out and going, are you calling me a liar with some terrible acting, getting some pizza and stuff? I give that a five star match. So, you know. <laughs> Um, as, far as, as, far as, well, as far as Raven Effect goes with the whole, if, are you calling me a liar? I too was not into it as well. I kind of thought the gimmicks and all that was kind of stupid. Yeah, and if anyone knows about terrible acting and stuff, if it's still having a good, entertaining video, it's Pornhub Larkin. Of course. <laughs> so if Larkin knows the acting and stuff is that terrible. Hey, what about Robert Does Dallas? I mean, he knows something about acting too, right? He's a director. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hook you up. I'm gonna say it was a Cowboys cheerleaders, but let's be honest, it was uh, Jack Prescott. Wow, that failed. Just a big flop. <laughs> right, that was so wrong, man. This is just a kind of shit to me. You don't do it to Robert. Robert's a good guy. <laughs> no, he is, and like you're a scumbag, <laughs> pile of monkey dicks, like KM's character is. I was going to say, I would probably not do as well. I'd probably get the, the water boy or something like that. You know what I mean? Or the water boy's grandfather or something, whatever. And just to clarify, Robert is a good guy. He's never banged Dak Prescott. Uh, brother underscore, sister underscore, whatever the fuck he's called anymore. Um, he's not a scumbag, but he still has a bag of penises. So, <laughs> and Larkin is jerking off as we speak. <laughs> hey, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Don't be stealing hurls gimmick now, Larkin. All right. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Leave the fap in the hurls. I'm sorry. That's right. He is. He didn't let me finish. He's jerking off right now while hurls is outside of his window with binoculars, jerking off to what Larkin is watching on his screen, jerking off. This is a big heel cast circle jerk. Kyle and Chef are nowhere to be found. I was gonna say Chef's outside, outside, standing next to hurls with a cop. <laughs> Chef is in handcuffs right now, but it's fucking spoiler alert and plot twist. It's actually not a cop. It's Kyle that has him handcuffed. Oh, for God's sakes. I knew we were going back to the S&M podcast on this one. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that, I mean, <laughs> sex and masturbation podcast. There you go. <laughs> Just soak this one up. Like my hand in some Vaseline. Anyways, uh, two weeks ago we saw Congo Kong. Thank you, Congo Kong. Great interview for the Hillcast did with Congo Kong. Give it up, motherfuckers. That's right. Just waiting for you all to clap at home. That was not clapping. That's just what I was telling you guys was going on. Um, but anyway, we see Joseph Park on the phone with his grandma, Jenny. I don't even know that. Uh, so if is it Jenny Park? Because Jenny Park kind of seems like Jenny from the blog. Kind of like a sexy gilf kind of thing name. So... Um, but he's asking how Chandler was doing, and then the boy Jimmy Jacobs, the princess, comes up, and him and Congo are there. Uh, so, you know, you see Joseph hang up the phone, gets a little intimidated. Jacob says he wants a monster abyss to come out. Again, if anyone read uh, the fantasy book and challenge going on in Impact Asylum, the RAV was messing with some Jimmy Jacobs using with Abyss, kind of pairing those two together before this came out, just saying. But uh, he said that he wants it next week. Not talking about sex, guys. But uh, he said it because he's a prince. Okay, yeah, this sounds like porn. He wants it next week because he's a princess, and princesses always get what they want. Um, but that that happened, and then uh, Laurel Van Ness was being a hot mess outside as she heads to the ring. So she's a new hot mess for a couple more weeks until she's gone off TV for good, and God knows what she's going to be doing. Zack Ryder, disgusting. But uh, Lash then we see Lashley say for months he's had to decide between MMA or wrestling. He's going to focus on both. Uh, his boy, Eddie Edwards, turns around and uh, asks him what's up. Well, she just walks away. But then we get to a new match. Uh, Kira Hogan making her debut. She is almost as dark as Hulk is. Um, just, you know, not as orange. Doesn't have as good of a tan. But she wrestles uh, the hot mess, the Impact Knockouts champion, LB and Laura Van Ness. Uh, it's kind of her Impact debut. But she actually, with uh, help from Ali, gets the roll-up and steals the victory. A little bit impressive. Big win for her to start off her uh, Impact debut and career. Impact dude, what's your thoughts on Kira Hogan and uh, the non-title match in victory? You know what? That that actually, I liked it. And I didn't think I was going to. I really did. I, I, I don't necessarily like somebody walking in and beating the champ, but the way that they build it was perfect. Uh, they 
you know, the distraction. Kira gets Kira goes over. Laurel does the job on her way out the door. Nobody looks bad. Um, it was it was a solid it was a solid match. It really was. This is the kind of this is the kind of way that they should be doing this type of stuff. I I, I liked it. I liked it. But I, I got to tell you something. I have, just since you're talking about Jimmy Jacobs and porn, I just keep thinking, my God, we could have like Jimmy Jacobs, right, the porn star, and then we could have like porn and wrestling mixed together. Well, it was for a little bit, man. There was a lot of XPW. porn. XPW. Jasmine, say Jasmine St. Clair, man. I, I'm, just, I'm just talking about like impact and, and, and whatnot. God forbid we bring Joey Ryan back. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You know, that like, would be awesome. But I mean, you bring up Jasmine St. Clair and like she, did she have like the world's biggest game banger at some point at one point? Wasn't that? Yes. yes. I mean, think about this, dude. Like you're a fat sob and you're the blue meanie and you just lose all of this weight and your prize is like you get to fuck the girl and wife down the girl that's been fucked by so many dudes at the same exact time. No one else is taking that many dicks at the same time. I mean, who doesn't want to wipe that bitch down? You're definitely going to feel special <laughs> kissing that mouth. And, I mean, you could go home every night, kiss that woman, and get the backwash of, like, thousands of just busted nuts just going right back in your mouth. And, I, don't think, I don't think I'd be able to, 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 to fuck her at all, man. I think I'd just be thinking about all those other dicks in there and just be like, God, this thing's wide open. I, know fuck her. I, I would totally hit it. I just would never, ever, ever wipe it down. Uh, I don't know. I'd be able to get off, man. I, I think I'd be so distracted by the, well, the, yeah, I mean, the video. It's a hot dog in the hallway. I mean, like you don't just na- normally get a hard on his jizz by walking around in the air. I mean, that's kind of what it feel like with that bitch. But... Then again, she'd probably let you screw whoever you wanted on the side. Oh, yeah. She could get throat cancer and you could fuck a hole in her neck. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest, the greatest R.A.B. that ever lived. This is right. my drop. I mean, I'd probably fit, to be honest with you, right through the port, you know, so, hey, what the hell? <laughs> I know. You would. I've seen it. <laughs> it's still bigger than mine, but, you know, like, I, you know, we show dicks all the time and we're just hanging out in the chat room. I mean, why not? It's a Hillcast ritual. We all just wagners out, dicks out for Harambe, and so we're just like, dead, dicks out for the next person that leaves impact. I'm just failing a lot today. I'm, I'm trying to throw some fucking winging shit in here and hoping people are laughing at home. But, you know, these people are going to laugh at the shit I say most of the time. So when they don't laugh, I'm just like, well, this shit's going to suck on the air. But <laughs> good God. Herbert's podcast. Uh, Robert, what did you think of LVN against Kira Hogan? Ooh, good, cool match. You know, I have no complaints at all. But. I, I, I might need to throw a, a porn reference at this time around. Go ahead. <laughs> why the, not, right? Yeah, why not? Of course. I, am I the only one that, you know, find the whole LBN gimmick similar to the whole hookup hotshot porn site? If you don't know what that is, you know, you must think that I am a pervert, pervert and that's, that's true. But it, it, that reminds me of her every time around. Yeah. <sighs> Hey, what 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 do you guys think? Or what's the name of that site again? Hookups, ho- hookup, hotshot. Hookup, hotshot. Yeah. All right, hookuphotshot.com. Ooh, <laughs> find them, friend them, fuck them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am under eighteen. That is apparently an option here. <laughs> Wait, there what? Well, they oh my god! Still... The girl, the, the girl, seriously, the girl on the homepage right now. If like, oh my god, it looks, it's just like, it looks just like Lauren. Oh Does <laughs> it? At least she got cum all over her face and braces, but yeah, oh, otherwise, geez, man. straight up with the makeup. I think you're right. Yeah. Wait, yeah. That's jizz on her face and glasses and braces. That is Laurel. <laughs> Hookuphotshot.com. Actually, Robert... that's Laurel on my TV screen. Actually, after every time I see her, but. <laughs> Start hanging out more, man. This, this is this is good stuff. I am getting enlightened here. So wait, are you meaning to tell me that you can actually that's... find girls that are under eighteen on this site to hook up with? I, I think they probably kick you off the site. That has uh, said. Like, is like, is anyone else, okay? Just uh, all I'm saying is like uh, this is Jared Fogel. If this isn't how he got caught, then I don't know. I think you go to jail if you click that I am under eighteen. You, you should find out. Jail. You should click and try, John. Uh, <laughs> they just Johnny Impact. <laughs> they just kicked you off. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. John Denver, Rocky Mountain High. Oh my God! All these girls look. I know they're trying to make them look young, but they look very young. I'm 
looking at Kitty Porn, anyone? Yeah, I was. I mean, that's how, that's how Jared Fogle got busted, rightfully. I'm, I'm assuming they're all over, they're all over 18, but it's, this is kind of scary here. Because this show just went off the deep end. Like, if we finally just went too fucking far, like, I feel like this week's episode shouldn't be on YouTube. Like, it either needs to be on PornTube or, like, somewhere on the dark net. No, nah, maybe just the dark this show. I, I am literally watching Amara Romani pee through her panties into a cup, <laughs> and, she's, and she's wrapped in chains. And she's got to come all over her face, and she's smiling. Oh my god! How is that off the? How is that off the hook, man? This show is perfect. This is literally like the chat windows. Ooh. Old school chat windows. Who hasn't talked about this fucking match, Larkin? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I, I thought the match, Kara Hogan. I've seen her work on the independent scene. Very talented individual, trained by Curtis Hughes, aka Mr. Hughes. Um, you know the match. The match was good. I mean, you, you saw you saw Laurel get you know most of the offense, and Kiara Hogan with the help of uh Allie, the roll up one two three. And now she has a championship matchup next week. Thank you, Larkin. Literally, the like. <laughs> Thank you, Larkin. <laughs> by far the best fucking thing that has been said on this show by far. So like, yeah, that's gonna get. That's like the only clean analysis with some decency that's apparently gonna be on this week's show. So I hope you people that are listening so are still enjoying, and for the rest of you that are never tuning in again, like I get it. <laughs> and he's the guy with the S M podcast. That's the best part of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dude, his nickname so awesome. is Pornhub. Is like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away from this immoral filth that you guys are talking about. Immoral live. That's the shit that's legit. Immoral live. Uh, so there's this girl that does interviews. I'm not even gonna say her name because I don't, I don't even want the conversation distracted about how bad people want to bone Mackenzie Mitchell, but. Um, someone I want about EC3 and Alberto were interviewed, uh, and Alberto goes first by saying he's the real champion, and he doesn't have to prepare himself. That I I probably sounded racist. Did not mean that to come out that way, but like, <laughs> like I'm just trying to mimic him. I mean, like we had Kyle yeah. do fucking Puerto Rican or Spanish uh, Drew Galloway once. I was just trying to sound like Alberto to try and get things going, Pedro's, but. Um, so anyway, so what happens is they're I think talking we should about that the Robert, all right? Yeah, Robert can do should. it. He knows yeah, how. Rob, Rob, you can do the Alberto impression, dude. I'm sorry. Like I legitimately apologize to you. Not just Chef. Yeah, yeah, Chef, yeah. He's like, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great bro. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he sounds like Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> Did you say Volvo, 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 Volvo? Bobby Lashley. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You, the, uh, I get it. That was good. Um. Later on in the episode, though, we're going to ha- let Robert mock a, a white person voice yeah, so we can be even. And you can see the, the show does not condone racism or pornography or dick jokes or pro wrestling. God damn it. Will you fucking laugh at something I say, motherfuckers? <laughs> Thanks, Larkin. You're welcome. I just didn't sound corn. If y'all could see me dancing right now, <laughs> if you could see me dancing right now, like it would have been the best part because I was just totally homoerotic dancing to this and just getting down. My dog was staring at me like, what the fuck? And my dog Rico is gay, I'm sure too, so he's kind of like, I'm digging it. Okay, <laughs> anyways, um, so there, just fuck it. There's a tag team match set up later. It's Alberto and EC3 against uh, Moose and Johnny Impact. So then, then what happens is uh, LAX comes to the ring. Conan's on the mic, says they're the blue pill, and they always stay hard. Um, and what's the other thing that he says? It's fucking cool now. Serious like a late period. That's right. Serious like a late period. Not that blue pill because we always stay hard. So he calls OBE out, uh, calls him some not so. Murphy Hinge. Um, so OBE, OBE comes out, and they get in the ring. And then, of course, Sammy Callahan gets on the mic. And Sammy Callahan fucking yells out whatever the hell, like, he's trying to say. This fucking guy, I, I, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just get back to it in a sec. Basically, um, he says that, uh, you know, the war's still on. They'll come take the bus whenever they want. But uh, that they're, they've are they got bigger fish to fry. Because there's bigger fish to fry than the fucking champions. Right? Jesus Christ. Um, but then, 
you know, LAX is they're going to step away. They're going to do a break from this. But then Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee attack uh, LAX with some kendo sticks and shit. And I'm excited for that feud. LAX against Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley. That's awesome. I want to see Sanjay and Petey get in the tag team division. But, okay, fucking Sammy Callahan, dude. We, we talked a little bit about this. This guy just fucking yells everything. Like, he doesn't talk normally. He just yells and screams everything he says. His face gets beat. He literally looks like a beat. Like, Dwight Schrute would, like, actually pick him at his farm. He is, like, beat red in the face. His blood pressure is about to just pop a vessel through his fucking... He looks worse than Dana White, like, on a normal day. Stop fucking yelling everything you're saying, dude. We get it. Take his annex. Chill out. So be like, Hey, just everyone. Hi, my name is Sammy. <laughs> I just took it down. <laughs> I used to be really mellow right now, but I'm not. Just have to yell everything I say. Everything. Like the only, everything. Yeah. See, that's probably why the only girl I can ever have sex with is 300 pounds and tell Jessica Havoc and has half her head shaved. <laughs> uh, everything. <laughs> and I don't know if I can... <laughs> Larkin. Dude. Uh, okay, I like the whole segment. Uh, then we had, you know, Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley coming out looking like a couple beach bums with their sweaters and shit, attacking LAX. Um, and you know what? It was fun. It was a nice little setup. You know, we go on to more greener pastures with OBE. And then, you know, we get to the whole, we're going to get the whole uh, LAX, Trevor Lee, Caleb Conley thing I can see coming up. Tag titles on the line. They want more gold. And I mean, it's something new. It's something fresh for the tag division. So I thought it was cool. Robert? Yeah. It is good to see Trevor Lee outside of the X Division. So I'm looking, actually looking forward to their feud with with LAX. I think it, it could be something interesting. So finally, they're you know moving him away from that division. They already have cool kids in there. So that is a that is a good de decision. I don't know much what they can do with OBE, but you know best you know best of luck getting you know a, a new tag team so they can fa fail with but the, at least what 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 it mattered the most to me was you know seeing lax with someone else and also seeing Trevor Lee outside of the x division go ahead so look guys i'm i'm just as happy to see this feud roll on too and and we've all wanted to see <laughs> Trevor and and probably you know Andrew Everett actually and not Caleb Conley but you know like in the tag division right we, we we've been wanting to see this it's just fresh we're tired of seeing those guys stuck in the X division we need tag teams we're tired of LAX and we're tired of OVE so on one hand they're giving us what they want here on the other hand my God it seemed to me when Sammy Callahan gave that promo that and I'm I'm sorry every time I think about it, I just think Raven Effect screaming and it was Mike that that he really just said. We lost, and we're too pussy to continue the feud. Because, because, honest to God, guys, he says somebody's going to die, and we don't want to die, so we, we, we got better things. Like, there is nothing bigger. Raven Effect, there, there's nothing bigger than the tag champions, right? There is nothing bigger and better. So Only they got big, bigger fish to fry because they're scared to wrestle LAX again? It's like, they just buried themselves. It was literally ridiculous. They totally... It was like, look... <clears throat> Sammy, we want you to go to the ring. We want you to give a promo. And we want you to just bury yourself. Just as just dig deep a hole as you can dig. Right? And 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 then and then what we want you to do is we want you to take the dirt and collapse it in on you. That's what it came off like to me. It was like freaking ridiculous. Yeah, the only thing bigger than the tag team championship is just dig. So look, yeah, this is what I was saying. It's so fucking stupid. Say so we got bigger fish to fry. Are you going to go after the world championship now? Because I'm pretty sure like these scrawny emo pussies probably couldn't kick the shit out of uh, Eli Drake. Because we're still Eli Drake right now this time. Or Alberto. Or Impact. Or any, you know what I mean? It was just ridiculous. Um, and I didn't get that part. But yeah, Fresh Feud. I want to see who they bring in for uh, OBE. Maybe it's those Canadian guys like TR, TT, or some, whatever they were. I kind of liked them at the time. Again, you know who I want to see. Petey and Sanjay together. But... Uh, anyone have anything to chime in before we go to the next thing? Um, I mean, like I said, man, we're going to see a new few new fresh views. That's what you got to see. Uh, PD and Sanjay would be a dope tag team. I mean, it's just let's hope for a brighter feuds for the uh, tag team division. Uh, anyone else? No, we're good. All right. Well, the next segment we had was Mackenzie Mitchell 
back with Moose and Johnny Impact about EC3 in Alberto. And Moose said it was a new year, but it's February. It would have been better in January, but he said it. But when you think about it, it's probably recorded before the new year. I'm Sammy Callahan. Everyone that gets me over contributes to some stupid shit like this. Everyone. Um, so then Johnny calls Alberto and EC3 some names, talks in Spanish, thinking back to Moose and whatnot. Um, and then what do we have? We have the tag team match. Actually, we saw uh, the, the video package of Brian Cage. Um, if anyone hasn't seen Brian Cage, I've seen him impact a little bit on the underground. Dude is legit as fuck. He's solid, ripped as fuck, uh, but moves around almost like a, an X Division or a Cruiserweight guy. Uh, I just, I, I'm excited as hell to see this guy. Hurls will give him, let's give Hurls credit because Hurls kept saying we're going to get this guy. And I was like, no, we're not going to sign anything. Like, we're too poor. But props to Hurls, am I right? Yeah, you're right. And besides the fact that Brian Cage is married to the beautiful Melissa Santos and, you know, they just had a kid. Who is that? Melissa Santos is the Lucha Underground announcer. So Brian Cage oh, and Melissa Santos are married, yes. She's so, fine. Yep. Yeah, about two weeks ago they had the baby, right? It's been real recent. <clears throat> yes, sir. I just, you know, speaking of hurls, I just cannot wait for Brian Cage to feud with Donovan Dijak. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be legit. What, <laughs> when, I told, when I told Hurls today, his basketball argument was even less credible than him saying Donovan Dijak. Do that, dude. <laughs> this, don't bring up Donovan Dijak. This has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. <laughs> of course. Hurls was snapping on me today, man. Uh, Robert. It's, you know, I am a fan of Brian Cage, so that that is a great sign. And, you know, obviously... We lost two heavyweights in Storm and Lashley, so that is someone that is gonna be free. And EC3, three, three, sorry. So he's, you know, we got at least one back. We need two more, two more heavyweights to keep the balance, but that is the first great first step getting Ryan Cage. Uh, see, uh, I think everyone's kind of talked about Cage, haven't we? Yep. All right. We're going to move on to the tag team match. Now we had Moose and Johnny Impact against Alberto and EC3. And I don't, like, it's kind of dawned on me. If we were to do this, let's say this was a six-man tag and they would be like, uh, was it in WCW where they, it was random, like, fall brawl? Not fall brawl, but uh, the lethal lottery where heels could team up with faces and whatnot. Mm -hmm. If Moose and Johnny Impact tag teamed up with Sammy Callahan, like, you could literally call the tag team Neapolitan. Just saying. Yeah. But, um, so, I can't remember who won. Did, uh, EC3, no, Alberto Moose. took the pin, not even EC3, uh, yeah. and M Moose got the pin on him, right? Yeah, yeah. Moose pinned Alberto. Now, I know this is going to sound like I'm full of shit because I didn't remember how the ending went, but this tag team match was really fucking good. I liked it a lot. Um, I don't know who I, I really did. It was good. No, I, I, <laughs> okay, yeah, good point. I haven't even going to argue. <laughs> but no, I was very impressed. Team match on the S&M podcast. There you go. Yes. But I'm, I'm not. I'm not tagging you in, Mark, and I'm just letting you know. Okay. I'm, I'm not tagging you in at all, buddy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> not that would be like, <laughs> if Hurls was doing it, it would be like a tag team on that Ebony Girl or something, Larkin and Hurls, or I'm sure she'd never go for anything like that because you know. But um, I'm I'm good on that front. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I like this tag team match a lot. I really did. I love Moose. I love uh, Johnny. Love EC3. Albert does all right. Uh, he, he's definitely a lot. I like him a lot more than I thought I was going to. But um, let's see. Who should I start with? Uh, Impact dude. Oh, it, this, is, on the tag team. this was this is why, and I I like tag teams. Um, I, I like I, I like handicap matches even more. But at any rate, um, <clears throat> this is actually a very good match, and you had a lot of good talent in it. The one thing I want to throw out there, guys, is that. And I've been thinking this and saying this for the last year or so. So it's not just because EC3 left, but kind of like a kind of like a fish out of water a little bit. You know, he's not quite as agile and quick as some of those other guys were in the ring, and they were they were bigger than him too. And so he didn't. He just came off. Not that he came off bad by any stretch, but he didn't come off as though he lifted himself up. So like when when Eli Drake wrestled Johnny Impact, right? Eli Drake stepped up his game so he could match Johnny Impact. At least, I mean, not not it's, you can't just match Johnny Impact, but be in the same league. And, and EC3 just seems a little bit stiff next to those guys. 
Uh, I don't think this is as big a loss as people think it is. You know, I obviously have been very critical of how he handled his exit on social media over the last year. But that aside, you know, when I when I look at this match and I look at how Alberto is a bigger guy, but more agile. Moose, enormous guy, more agile. Johnny's Johnny. I mean, that guy's just the innovator of offense. I don't I don't see this EC3 loss as being as big a deal as what people are making it out to be. Again, it was a very good match. EC3 wasn't bad in this match. It was just the level of talent that was in the ring with him. I just don't think that he stepped up and played the game with them. And it'll be interesting to see how things go in NXT. Was he just saving himself for NXT to make sure he stayed healthy? Right? Is he going to up his game? Because he had a lot of athletic guys there, too. And in order for him to succeed there, he's not going to get that monster push because he's got the Carter name. Sure as hell not going to get that in WWE. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But I, he just he didn't really didn't really impress me in this match. You know, um, oh, sorry. Go go ahead, Robert. Yeah, is it uh, what you're saying, dude? It, it's true. You know, EC3 is a great talent, but he's not a great wrestler and. He, you know, when he wrestled Lashley last year, last no, about two years ago in Bound for Glory, he stepped up on the same level as Bobby Lashley. But he had lost his passion, and he's not that good if you compare him against Moose or uh, Alberto or, or, or Johnny Impact. So you might have a point in there that EC3, you know, is a big loss when it comes down to heavyweights and, you know, talent, overall talent. But when it comes down to the ring, no. And the whole strategy Impact is doing is the whole WCW strategy that they used during the early 90s. Young, athletic, and under 40. That is the, the, the way they are building the roster and it is clear as a daylight so if you judge by that metric ec3 is not that athletic as some of the other guys so i think he, you know he probably was a lot more expensive and he's not that athletic so you i i see your point in their uh, impact dude go ahead Dargan. Um, I thought all the guys, you know, did well. I liked the match. Uh, we get to see more with Moose and Alberto now. As far as EC3 goes, I mean, you know, with his future endeavors now going in the NXT route, he is using the EC3 name. Uh, it's going to be very interesting interesting to see where that goes. But, yeah, overall, I thought the match was good, and it progresses more with Moose and Alberto, a little Johnny Impact in the mix. And it's just, it's going to be, again, refreshing and a nice little uh, twist to see what we got coming further with those guys. I mean, just a couple things to add to it. I mean, you know, uh, the Impact dude had mentioned that he, he enjoys tag team matches. He enjoys handicap matches. I enjoy tag teaming the handicap. But on a side <laughs> note... Okay. <laughs> boy. Oh, boy. Wow. We just dug the show to a, to a new low. <laughs> I hope I just broke the fucking internet. I went there. But, uh, you know, the one thing, yeah, I will say about this is, is you guys are... <laughs> I mean, Trump's probably said worse, right? And Hillary's killed people, so is that? I think Clinton did worse. I think Bill did worse in the White House, so it's, it should okay. be all good. Gee, I'm going to be taking advantage of people like your name is Monica Lewinsky, like in there. That's all I'm saying. But um, yeah, look, talent wise in the ring, EC3 is, is not on the level of those three. I'm not going to lie that. That's the only like real critique with EC3 is that he wasn't the best uh, like in, in the ring guy. But I mean, let, let's also not skip the fact that, you know, we talk about. People being over, uh, in, in like uh, you know, we, we look at a fucking in-house or good god, man, I can't remember what I call it. Uh, household names: Goldberg, no talent in the ring. Um, Hulk Hogan, very average. John Cena, a little bit better than them. And let's let's just keep it real. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin was not having the kind of matches that Stunning Steve Austin had. But yes, you guys are absolutely right. I mean, the knock on EC3 was he was not uh, even, even at his height, you know, and he had some very good, he had some classic matches in Impact. I'm not even going to dispute that. Him and Rockstar Spud, him and Bennett, uh, you know, there's some great matches there with Matt Hardy, like that. I think it was a hardcore match or something. There was some great shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, he definitely was not the, the talent there, and he, you know, his matches probably have kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, him and, uh, God, why do I want to call him Evan Bourne? Matt Seidel, 
you know, they had a pretty decent matches on there, but, you know, I'm not going to dispute that at all. I have no idea what someone just tried putting in our chat window, but that was long as shit. Um, but uh, are you guys ready to move on to the next? Yep. To yes. the greatest? Mm-hmm. So, we have these celebration bitches. The champion, the man who's on another level, the greatest guy in the business, see, the greatest man that ever lived, the greatest friend that ever lived, Eli Drake comes out with Chris Adonis. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to let you guys go. I'm gonna just going to get my thoughts on this, uh, and I'm going to let y'all roll. But, so, Chris Adonis is gone, and a lot of people just hated Chris Adonis and just took every chance they can to shit on him, count. But he was good in this role. Like, he was good in his role. He wasn't taken away from anyone. And the skit that they did together was funny. The way Adonis hosted, the way that he rolled about it, he did a very good job. It was funny. Uh, and, and I really liked it. I feel that the hugest mistake that they made was it should have been live. This should have We should have not known this weeks in advance. This would have been so fucking great live. I mean, just the pop. The just kiss, Like, I would have figured it out. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but back in the days, right before I stopped watching WWE permanently, um, Heath Slater was doing this thing where he was calling out all these legends from the past and whatever, and, uh, like, Vader came out, and they, like, he'd give these hints and these clues, and I just remember sitting at home watching it, and he talks about how he's the man, he's, he's the man that rules the world, and, like, the second he said that, before anything hit, I, st I was like, holy shit, it's Sid, I started marking out my seat, like, it's fucking Sid, and then all of a sudden, you know, Sid Insane Justice comes out. And I'm popping, I'm huge. As soon as he says, I'm the, the greatest friend that ever lived, the greatest this, the greatest that, it's like, you know the greatest man that ever lived is coming. And just that that feeling, that high, just knowing, like, oh, my God, it's going to be Aries, you know, like, figuring that out ahead of time. And then when it actually happens, if they could have done it on a live show, man, just, it, 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 it should have been so much better. But, look, we had, that came out, Austin Aries made his return, he was eating a banana, Good God, this the show does not need bananas right now. Um, no, no clue where that one's gonna go. But so he comes out, does it? They lay down the do the challenge for the match. Aries beats him in just a matter of seconds. This is the only guy, the literally the only guy that I would be like, it's cool that he ended Eli's reign in just a few seconds. But we have a new world champion. He is the greatest man that ever lived. Eli Drake, phenomenal world championship reign. It'd be interesting to see where this goes, but. My man A Double is back, and he beat my other man Eli Drake. These are my two favorite people in wrestling at all. So, awesome segment, uh, Robert. What were your thoughts? Uh, good pick up, getting Austin Aries. Uh, I, my critique about this segment, and is this? I think it is fair. You remember last year when uh, Jeff Jarrett was given the keys to the kingdom? What was the first thing he did? He did a title change on TV by getting Alberto El Patron beating Lashley in under five minutes. So I kind of, you know, got that impression like, hey, you're lifting the same ideas from Jared and now calling that on your own. That That's kind of, you know, the sour, the only sour taste that I got into the whole thing. But it, that that is minuscule. I think this this is the only guy there that could have ended Eli Drake reign without you know backlash from the fans. Aries, now we have to look forward who's gonna be there his next you know people he's gonna be wrestling with because the level of wrestling is gonna be up and also the level of character is gonna be up. So it, it is overall a win. That is not a loss. The same as this uh, this whole program. This was this may have been a about average show, but it was still a win. And a win is a win is a win is a win. So at the end of the day, that is what mattered the most. That is what you introduced to the bank. You don't introduce a loss. So it was an overall good pickup and. You know, let's see where, where things are headed with Austin Aries as the new Impact Global Champion. Go ahead, Larkin. All right, buddy. Um, yeah, dude, I, I um, I'm a fan of Austin Aries. I mean, as far as the Impact history of him goes, the Austin Star days, you know, the greatest man that ever lived, obviously. I really did enjoy seeing him back. I've always been an Austin Aries guy. So to see him as the champ again, you know, there's a lot of fresh matchups there, and I think it's actually cool that Impact Wrestling has him again. So we get to see a lot of great stuff with Austin Aries coming in the future, and then next week he's going to be on that teleconference for them at 2 p.m. 
you know, I like Austin Aries too. I do. I think he's a great talent. I, 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 I enjoy watching him in the ring, and I have no problem with them putting the world title on him. The problem is, guys, nobody gave a shit. Nobody in the impact zone made a noise. Man, it was like you could hear a pin drop when he won the belt. Yeah, there was hardly any reaction. So they, 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 they come in for the guy, right? And, and, and they didn't even, look, Larkin, they didn't even go and take the trouble to pipe some noise in for the freaking show. No, 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 no. We're just going to pretend like no, nobody cared. And so I sit here and think to myself, no, why do I care? Nobody else cared. It was it was terrible. First of all, the guy deserved better. I mean, let's just be honest. Let's You're just right call on. spade a spade. Yeah, he right. deserved better, but it was horrible. It was terrible. Zero stars. And I, and I like what did happen. I like what happened. He runs and throws the banana into the crowd. Thank God I didn't catch a damn banana. Uh, <laughs> Raven effects and trying to get me to catch his banana for years. And then and then he comes in and and the next thing you know. He's a new world champ, and nobody cared. It's like, Jesus Christ, what are you going to do? Please don't go back to freaking Orlando. Oh, crap. Now she's just going to kill me. But I'm honest about it. The crowd did go mild, yes. Yeah, Heel Team 6 is literally going to pull a drive by shooting on uh, Brother Underscore's house. Uh, <laughs> look, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to keep this real. Chef, I love you. I, I, I know you're a little bit bitter, and, and I, I know you say different reasons, but I'm going to be honest. It's because they left Orlando and they fired yeah. Graham. But, <laughs> Chef, this is, why, this is exactly why the fuck no one wants him to come back to Orlando but you and like the other people that are there, dude, because this is bad. This is Austin Aries coming back. I know, Chef, Chef I know you, you were down as fuck on Impact, but I know you tried hard to make noise to make the, the roster look good because you still have that in you, and I love you for it. I love you to death, man. I appreciate that, but dude, you can't go back there. Canada, who didn't even have like many people show up, dude. It's so much better than what we had to listen to. And the town didn't deserve that. And Austin got, didn't deserve that. You got more crowd noise from your dogs than freaking Austin Aries did for his title cha title change, man. Yeah. The impact zone is fucking terrible, dude. It's bad. It makes it look bad. It's like no one cares. No one gives a shit. At least in Canada, they're not just stopping by a theme park. They, you know, like they're there for a reason. And, and you know, it's I, I'm glad you know Aries can have a lot of good matches on his way back. Like we've seen him wrestle lastly a bunch. The fact that we're not going to get him an EC3 in a few just it, it totally bums me out. But you know, but he, him and Eli Drake, I'm sure they're going to have a collision. You know, but they think him, Eddie Edwards, Johnny Impact, Alberto, Petey Williams, Trevor Lee. I mean, we can get a lot of great matches against A Double in there. We can go on and have a great match with anyone. Uh, Moose too. You know what I mean? But and he's an inner like darling, so he's not going to generate any bad publicity at all, right? So the press is going to be good. God damn it, Raven Effect. What are you doing to that poor dog? Oh, uh, Muffy's got, got a collapsed trachea. This old man coughs all the time. Oh. Gets real annoying. Poor, poor Oh, man. That was my geese. Poor fellow. My little old geezer. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, they needed to pipe some, use some noise in when it happened. And they needed to then edit the show. Put some crowd noise in. It ain't that hard. I mean, ROH mics their crowd like you can't believe. If you look at their crowd, they look no different than the Impact Zone. But they sound so damn loud because they're all mic'd up. So mic the crowd. But at the very least, for God's sakes, you know what? Pipe it in afterwards. Take your lumps. If people complain about it. They won't really, really know. The average fan doesn't really, really care. But at least make us think you want us to think that this is important. Versus just, eh, whatever. Robbie is back. I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying? Well, hold on now. Look, I mean, the ROH crowd and the Impact crowd, they don't look any different. Come on. For one, there's a whole lot more overweight people in the <laughs> ROH crowd. There's a <laughs> whole, whole lot more people that have not taken a shower in the ROH crowd. There's about three times as many virgins in the, in the ROH crowd, the Impact crowd. And, yeah, there, there's some more teeth. That, there's, <laughs> I mean, hold on, though, because we were talking about Florida, so I mean, teeth to teeth to faith ratio might actually be equal there, but um, yeah, just I always got the nerves, man. Like, you don't see a bunch of people being like, "Oh, Japanese shit is cool." No, motherfuckers, fuck New Japan. Bullet Club. Like back in my days, dude. Like, if motherfuckers like Pokemon, you got your ass kicked for liking Pokemon. Now it's like cool about it and shit, but like all that anime shit is not cool. It's nerdy. New Japan is nerdy. It's not fucking cool. Stop sucking Dave Meltzer's dick. He's been covering wrestling for no, for years and years because he literally has no life. He's a douchebag. 
Fuck David Meltzer. Anyways, go ahead, guys. There's there's no way to top that. There's no way to top that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, David Meltzer. And it's of stopped. <laughs> So, I mean, look, a couple other things I want to say is, uh, look, obviously, we brought this up last week, but JB ain't going to be hosting a law. So, after hearing this masterpiece, who's not going to want to hire the Heelcast to do a national radio show? Am I right? Yeah. Nothing classier than this fucking episode. <laughs> but, look, uh, so JB is leaving, too. So, look, that means we're going to, thank God, get a new uh, color commentary guy, or play-by-play, -play, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully, we get rid of Josh Matthews, too. Um I'll be honest. So I've been, I've, I've ordered the the GW or GFW anthology one and two. I've, I've really enjoyed these shows, but um, dude, Cyrus Fees and Chael Sonnen, and people were kind of knocking Chael. They, they are so much fucking better than what we have. Cyrus Fees, bring this guy over. Like Chael's got Bellator, he's gonna be fighting for a while. Sign the Cyrus Fees guy and put him with Don Callis or something. I mean, do it. You, the, 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 the commentary's been so bad, and this guy is just miles and miles above them. You know who I like to see back? Uh, the the guy who they hired for a, for a little while, the Todd Todd Kenley guy. Yeah, Todd Kenley. Kenley yeah. was dope. Good. Yeah, he was, I like Todd. Yeah, he was good. I, I don't think he charged you that much. So you save a couple of bucks with with that guy, probably unless you have to you know pay for catering, but that's beside the point. <laughs> so that I I I will be. Uh, pushing for him instead of uh, the other guy from from G GFW, the original <laughs> one, because you know La Jared, he, you know, still persona no grata for for the time around. So I, I I'm leaning a little bit more towards thought. Go ahead. Well, you know, um, we could do Con Connolly and Cyrus fees or something. Um, or not Connolly, but Kennelly. So, and this is the thing. I love Todd Kennelly at the time, too. Old school Hill swords on his life. If you go back and listen to it, he's not that good. It's just that uh, Taz and Mike Tanae had just gotten so shitty that it made him sound a lot better. But I liked Kennelly a lot at the time. Um, we can all be the judge, but they've definitely got to do something. I, like It seems like they're forced to do something, but we got to do something better. Were we not all disappointed that they built up this huge reboot? And what the hell was the reboot? I mean, on one hand, they, they say we're going to change things slowly. And I'm all for that. Look, look, that's great by me. But then you say, this is it. This is the dawn of a new era. Right? You switch to ringside. You bring a new champ in. Okay. And that's it. Like, they, they didn't look any different. The show didn't feel any different. I would, I would have marked out so much to, to not have Josh Matthews and JB on. You know what I'm saying? They're horrible. They they've they've been so fucking bad. There is literally no excitement. There's, and I've said this since day, since Destination America, the very first night, Bobby Lashley wins that belt from Bobby Roode, and Josh Matthews just like, and we've got a new champion. Like no who, just nothing, no fucking emotion, no excitement, nothing being big. It, the beatdown clan forming was was oversold in this. And then when Borash came on, man, like, we all had hope. Like, it's JB. JB is great on these one. I don't shows and whatnot. Nothing. Like, JB has been so fucking terrible. They've both been so bad. They've both done so much damage to this product that literally the only time... And people were, like, shitting on Pope last year. Like, Pope fucking saved the goddamn broadcast for seven, eight months of the, of the fucking year last year. It, it's... it's They're so bad. You know, right, gotta I, change. I, got, I gotta throw this out there, man. Destination America, that very first show you're talking about, right? Was also the very first heel cast, right? And you bitch and you bitched about it then, right? And you haven't stopped bitching about it since. And nobody's told you you're wrong, but you still have to say it. That's sad. Yeah, I'm just right. saying, yeah, folks, folks listen to him. Raven Effect <clears throat> hasn't beaten this drum for over two years. Nobody has ever once, am I right or not, Raven Effect, told you wrong? <clears throat> no, not once. But nobody's done a damn thing about it. And I don't know how people, like wrestling people, they're knowing what they were doing, because let's, let's be honest, Jeff Jarrett knows what he's doing. Uh, what's his name that was there? Uh, Dutch Mantel. Yep. Scott Diamore. These people have been around this business a long time. They know selling. They have worked in like little smaller promotions. You know, like th these people go back to the fucking territories. Like Jeff Jarrett's dad owned territories. Dutch Mantel has been around forever, forever, forever. I did not like Don West at all. I thought the dude was way over the top. 
try to make everything sound too important. I would f- fucking give everyone on the Hill cast a fucking hand job right now for Don West to come back, just for someone to show some sort of excitement. Oh, God, just Don, kidding. please you're, stay away. Stay the hell away. Stay away. You're just saying away. that, but Girls is over there writing in a fucking fan letter right, right now. <laughs> you come back with Amazing Red. Go, Red, go. I honestly, look, I, I don't love or care about pressing that much enough, but, like, it's something's got to change, man. And it feels like something has to change now because, like, they don't have another option. <laughs> or Borash is gone. gone. <laughs> I just, the thing that I don't get about it is, like, they were still having Borash do voiceover, so we're still going to be stuck with this shit for, uh, fuck, another three, four, five weeks? I don't know. But it's, it's just... Well, for all we know, I mean, they, they freaking tape so damn many shows. He could have done them all, for all we know. You know, Josh Matthews was good in, like, a, a manager type of role last year when he did a little bit. Was it for Lashley or whatever? I don't know if it was last year or the year prior, but... What? Why not take him back to that role? Yeah. Just get rid of him. Boris is gone. I mean, bring in Don Callis and then give him... Uh, like Cyrus Kevin Pete, Kelly. Uh, Kelly. Kevin Kelly. Why not bring in He's Kevin New Japan. Oh, yeah, he's New Japan. So is... Freaking they're partners for God's sake. Oh, here's the thing: if you want to also look out for the back, Chael Sonnen was a good one because him and Jim Ross were a great announced team. Um, look at a guy like Rich Brennan. I mean, he was a guy that did NXT. He was good. I mean, if you want to bring in Rich Brennan, there's a solid name. And Matt Stryker. I mean, if he's Matt available. Well, Matt Stryker's doing Lucha Underground, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I've heard like Vampiro is even open. But I, mean, I don't know that I want that, but honestly, you know what? Here's here, honestly, God, and I'm not even joking. He may not sell it the best. I don't know, but Scott Steiner. Yeah, <laughs> Scott Steiner. There would never be anything more entertaining than Scott Steiner. Hailing from Dunkin' Donuts, your baby has my eyes. <laughs> Let's do some Steiner math, shall we? <laughs> here comes Grado. He's fat. <laughs> Scott Steiner trying to count the three. <laughs> Got Sammy Callahan over here. Ty Yellow screw up. He's fat. The problem is he'd want to get in the ring and beat the shit out of Sammy Callahan. And he might actually do it. Yeah. And then he'd hit switches on his bitch until he saw what she looked like and then be like, no, you, that's an actual freak. Not one of my freaks. Could you imagine the first time he had a steroid-induced, you know, outrage while he was behind the mic, got in the ring and randomly started beating the shit out of somebody? <laughs> I would love it. See, I, would love I would love it, it too. Love it. I would, I would die. If that guy would not be the best fucking commentator in the history of wrestling, just it would be must see TV just to see like what the hell is got against him. Short doses, though. Please. No, short hell doses. no, hell no, hell no. It's the whole Make him, show. Uh, you know what? Actually, speak of the devil, Joey fucking Styles. Um. Yeah. Okay. Joey Styles and Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> that would be epic. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> Actually, Steiner and Bischoff would make a good pair. Yeah, that'd be great, too. And let's put all three of them on there. There we go. That'd Bischoff be like, be killed being in the middle. Like, that would be the thing where the announcers are fighting and arguing amongst each other, like JB and Josh Matthews, that no one would give a shit or complain about. It would just be awesome. Yeah. Well, anyways, crickets and pin drops now. But uh, Big Papa Pump is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Guys, uh, anything else? Anyone have anything to chime in before we go? This is it. Robert's been doing quietness. Yeah, this is it. I'm, right. I'm just studying for my for my appearance on the F- SNM podcast. Oh, oh, it's it's going down. I've been hitting hot chick hookup. What was the name of that site again? I think, <laughs> you, need be, I think you need to be practicing your fucking alibi for why you were on kitty porn. Yeah, what was that? Right? It's under 16 or some shit like that. Under 18, yeah. I, I figure right. when the time comes, Raven Effect, I'll call you. You'll know how to get out of that one. I know how to get in them and know how to get out of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I've never fucked under 18 except when I was under 18. Anyways, uh, uh, wow, this episode. Thank you for <laughs> anyone who's still listening uh, uh, to our half porn, half just fucking degenerate, half. Pokemon, don't I'm doing Pokemon. Scott, yeah, I'm doing Scott Steiner math, so I've got about like four, four or five hundred percent of a show right now. <laughs> I think we're done. Done. I think we're just done. Yeah. Raven Effect, are you still there? Yeah. <laughs> we lost Raven Effect. Yeah, we lost him. 
<laughs> He's out. Raven's gone. He's it. That's it. What went wrong? <laughs> it's all time. <laughs> all right. We get five seconds to get Raven effect back, or we're going to let these poor people get back on with their lives. He is done. That's it. He's out. He's, He's out. out. He is done. done. He's out. <laughs> He's out. Raven's gone. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Raven effect is saying he kicked the power cord on accident <laughs> and shit off my computer. I don't know what that means, folks. We don't want to know either. <laughs> Everybody, as always, uh, I'm Impact Dude for Raven Effect, Robert Does Wrestling. My good buddy, Mr. Pornhub Larkin himself, and everybody else, the heel cast, and on behalf of TNAsylum.net, or ImpactAsylum.net. Jesus, been one of those shows. You guys, have a great week, and we'll catch you next time.